I lost everything because I talked about racism, says Scottish supermodel. I'm African and Scottish. I was born in Scotland. Uh, Scottish supermodel Eunice uh, claimed uh, that an appearance on a Channel 5 TV show some years ago hindered her career and she lost everything. Uh, she didn't lose everything whatsoever and it's, uh, it's strange or it's a coincidence that she's actually uh, came out with this story not for the first time as well. This is several times she's come out with this story with a, a similar headline but she's just coming out this to promote a new TV show which, which is quite convenient. So from Monday Eunice will feature in a new Netflix uh, doc documentary series called The Outsiders. It seeks to highlight the stories of black creators such as radio host Julie Andigua, comedian uh, Muna Chawa and the new Doctor Who. Uh, so she's saying what she's saying, it just adds a little bit more uh, lustre to what she's saying. So she's just promoting uh, a TV show at the end of the day, a bit more clickbaiting and obviously talking about racism. So basically she did an interview this week and she goes on to talk about the TV show which I've got a little the video for to, so you can actually see. She claimed that it was clipped as well, that they edited it in such a way it put her in a bad light. But if you watch it yourself it's, it seems that she's got a bit of a chip on her shoulder and uh, she does get called out in some respects because even people on social media afterwards say well they could name X amount of people she was telling other people to name. Uh, so it's just, just like you said for me it's just clickbaiting racism and obviously uh, the backstory to this in my opinion why it's come out is because again she's promoting this particular TV show which is becoming on uh, Netflix uh, I think it's very soon either this year or beginning of next year so basically a bit of background to this lady she's 37 year old she was born in Edinburgh to Nigerian parents and as per usual, the dad ran off, he did one, and she was brought up by a, a single parent and mother. And uh, she was brought up in, you know, I said in Edinburgh, she lives a, a council estate, and she, I think she was 15 years old, and she was picked to be a model. And she was given that, youth, you know, this the wording later on in her career, uh, a supermodel. Uh, agree with that or disagree with it. And uh, I just want what she said on the actual interview, which I found quite funny. I don't talk about race because I want to. It is because I'm always being asked about it. But if you see a lot of the stuff she says on social media, uh, stuff what she's uh, pushing, like uh, history in Scotland, uh, black history in Scotland, for example, and other stuff as well. And you just well, she's the one who never, you know, she's always talking about it. You know, this uh, her version of history sort of thing. And uh, she talks about slavery, the slave industry, and stuff like that. Like I said, she's Nigerian, which I find ironic when it comes to the the, the uh, anybody knows a little bit about the slave industry from Nigeria. And uh, she's sort of been born in this country again to Nigerian parents. Uh, she claims she's Scottish. Uh, again, that's up for debate for a lot of people. Says so she's not Scottish. She's of uh, Nigerian descent. And uh, she, if anything, she's British. She's not Scottish. She's, she's not the authenticity, obviously, of Scot Scottish. But she can go around saying. She's, She's Scottish all day long, if, she, if that plays her, which she'll never be Scottish in my eyes. Uh, and basically that's it really, but you just have to look what she's saying. Uh, she said uh, she suffered some trauma about uh, the actual interview she did on the TV, bro the programme, you know, like I said, the Jeremy Vine show. And, you know, it caused her to lose a career. She was cancelled, you know, she lost this, she lost that. It's, it's just hocus pocus, it really is. She didn't lose all that because uh, the amount of attention she got after that interview, she said it was quite negative. Yeah, it was negative from some quarters, but it was also very positive for some quarters as well. A lot of people uh, thought she was being sort of victimised, so she could play the, you know, the victim card. And the career, it's not been imp impeded whatsoever. Uh, she's once she's had, a, she got an MBE, and she was uh, she was talking about receiving the MBE. She wasn't really happy for that as well, because of the, the terminology British Empire, but it was a mother who persuaded her. Uh, from reading her version of the story, right, to actually accept the actual award, uh, then at the same time she bites hand what these are. So that's that's like I said, it's a typical mentality of some of these people. Uh, and like it's just really annoys me in some respects. And like I said, you see this a lot when it comes when they're actually doing a bit of clickbait and when they've got a TV show, they're, they're promoting a book. Is it Nadia Hussein, the lady on the BBC, the cook programme? Every time she's out there promoting a new documentary series or a new book, 
she always comes out with some about Islamophobia or some forms of racism, what she suffered online, the, the trolls. She always pushes that story out. Then underneath, there's a little bit of a, uh, a promotion for a book or a TV series, uh, what she's actually going to be doing. So much the same as this lady here. She plays on her, you know, her blackness uh, and she plays on the fact... Uh, of a, of a heritage and culture, you know, much the same as the blackness, and she saw sort of, in my eyes, like you said, it's almost it's just a one way street when it comes to these types of stories. And she's saying like racism Scotland felt worse because 20, 30 years ago the Afro Caribbean community is too small to fall back uh, on a, a sense of shared group identity, etc. So now it's different because obviously there's a lot more new Scots than there has been in the last 20, 30 years. But in my opinion, again, they're just. Uh, flexing the muscles, they want it their own way, they went there, they want their identity and culture put on the front, uh, you know, they don't want to sort of like accept all that, and they're, they're still, in, in some respects, aliens in a different, you know, not in their country, uh, whether they were born there is irrelevant, and so they've got to go along with that, they've got to, you know, if it's Scottish history, they go along with it, it's Scottish history, why should they actually introduce what they want to introduce, Afro-Scottish history, you know, there's not a lot of Afro-Scottish history, let's be honest about it, and much the same as this, uh, the same stuff as the uh, Black History Month, they want that promoting, or they want it every single day of the, of the week, literally, uh, in the curriculum, that's being promoted as well, which is only a matter of time before it happens before, before, throughout the UK. So this is, again, this lady, Scottish supermodel. See the clip, see what you think. Uh, like you said, she's allegedly said the clip stuff out, so it puts it in a bad light. I don't see that. I just think she had a bit of an attitude, and she went on to the show, and I think she got called out when she didn't like it. And she's, like I said, when she got called out, on, when after the programme ended, when it was edited, allegedly, uh, she she was saying, well, it, it wasn't really like that. I didn't really mean to say that. Yeah, whatever. All right, anyway, thanks for your continued support. All the best and take care and hope to see you again in the new year. Originally, I wanted to go into broadcasting and presenting. But when I was about 15, 16 in the United Kingdom, that was not possible. Uh, I would not have been given the opportunity. Oh, because media presenting. was very white. Because it's very white and people would <laughs> say that I was not, you know, allowed to do that job simply because of the sorry, colour. Like, there's lots of prominent black television presenters um, in the last 30 years, so... Okay, name the black female presenters, lots of them that you're well, talking about. I remember about. when I was a kid, or there, was, even um, better, there was the, um, even... the lady that presented, I can't remember her name exactly, but she presented the children's television programme. I think she's been made Okay, dame let's now. make it easier for you. Mm. If I was to say to you, name five well, there was lots of or ten presenters when household, I was I'm black. talking about women, No, okay? black female Blue Peter presenters, you're okay. younger than me, but there Let's, was, there was exactly. loads of them. That's, a, the that's actually a really interesting point, like Connie Hunt because be we can yeah. agree, actually, that at that period of time, there's probably more representation of women of colour than there is now. So that's really fascinating. I always say to people, if I was to say to you, name 10 women who are household names, who look like me from the United Kingdom, people find it very, very difficult, who are household names. If I was to say to you, name 10 black men, you'd probably be able to do it. On the one hand, I understand that you don't want people to be segmented and compartmentalised and we're all individuals yeah. and we all embrace our individuality and yet you're saying that there aren't more people that look like me. Why no, no, that's not what I else? said at all. But to be honest with you, this is something that you really need to educate yourself on at another time when we have more okay. time. Now, now, women of colour, women, of colour, women of colour, I would say that what you said was extremely patronising as well.